Hi everyone. So games change a lot during the development process. Of course they do. I mean, so do people. Just look at me for example. I used to be doing this. They were playing Fistful of- oh my god, lightning. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're playing Fistful of Frags and um... So yeah, there's a Mexican over there trying to shoot me. Uh, I like to think I've improved. So of course, Plants vs. Zombies is no exception, and definitely the most interesting bit of cut content from that game is the Limbo page. What's that? Well, it's a whole page of levels and minigames that were not included in the full release of the game. However, it's still possible to access them, but then the question is, are they worth playing? There's lots of videos online of people playing these levels, so their existence is no secret, but I've never seen anybody actually look at each minigame and review them. So leave it to me. I'll be ranking each level on a scale of 1 to 3 tacos. Cause I could go for a taco right now, I'm pretty hungry, I don't know about you. So basically, 1 taco means, yeah this is pretty bad, I can see why they dropped it. And 3 means, this should definitely be in the full game. So 2 is in between, meaning something like, I understand why they cut it, but it's still kind of fun to play. Sounds good? Oh one more thing. This video is not a guide on how to get to the Limbo page. If you want to check it out yourself, I'll leave a walkthrough down in the description. Okay, let's get started. There's actually three different categories I'm going to be organizing these levels into. The first is minigames. Yeah, not everything on this page is actually a minigame. So for now, let's focus on those. Up first is Art Challenge Walnut. So you know seeing stars? Imagine that, but like, worse. You just need to fill in the outlined spaces with walnuts. But there's a few problems with that. For one, seeing stars can be fun because when you fill up the board with star fruits, you can actually do some serious damage. But walnuts kinda don't do anything. Also, they have a slow recharge, which makes this even more tedious to get through. So one taco. No reason you should be playing this over seeing stars. But we're not done with this type of level yet. It's time for Art Challenge Sunflower. It's mostly the same idea, but you don't actually fill in the spaces with sunflowers. You actually use three different types of plants. I like this idea actually. It makes things a bit more interesting than just spamming one plant. Although Umbrella Leaf is useless in this level, so maybe that one wasn't the best choice. I still don't think this minigame is good enough to be worth being in the game especially when seeing stars is already there, but it's decent enough that I can give it two tacos. Next minigame, Sunny Day. So in this one, instead of getting 25 sun from the sky like usual, you now get 50. That's it. So this level allows you to save up tons of sun very easily, so it's not exactly a difficult level or really even that interesting. You can set up some pretty powerful defenses at least. I'll give it a two. A minigame in a very similar style is big time. So here, sunflowers, walnuts, and marigolds are big, and therefore more effective than usual. Well, marigold just gives you coins which doesn't actually help at all in the level so not sure why they picked it. And sunflower and walnut being supersized, you basically just have better versions of twin sunflowers and tall nuts for cheaper. So again, super easy level to just save up the sun. I like the idea of giant plants, but I don't know why they picked these three random ones. Might as well just do everything, or at least way more. I'll give it two tacos, but that's being generous. The next one to talk about is Unsodded. So you remember in the beginning of the game, how sad and pathetic your lawn looked? Well what if we went back to that? And this time, the zombies are playing dirty, they're not afraid to go off the lawn. Not like it made sense for them to act like that before anyways, but... Whatever. Point is, to beat this level, you're gonna have to use some plants that can target multiple lanes. It's pretty fun, honestly. The only problem I have with this level is that there's no reason for it to be four flags. It kinda drags on. But if they just fix that, I see no reason for this not to be an official minigame. Three tacos for you. Let's look at Air Raid. So on this level, balloons. So many balloons, it's like we're playing Balloons TD. The problem is, this level is kinda extremely easy to beat once you have one cattail. It's not 
bad, but there's already similar mini games to this that are more challenging and fun, so out of all of them, it makes sense to drop this one. Two tacos. On the opposite side of Air Raid, high gravity. As the name suggests, gravity is unusually high on the roof today. So high that all your projectiles can't even go far at all. So how do you win? Well, Fume Shroom is one of the only plants that is not affected by the high gravity, and also the only non-catapult plant that can shoot up the roof slope, so he's kind of a game changer here. Honestly, I don't really like this idea. I think it's more annoying than fun, and once you figure out a strategy, it's pretty much a normal level. So, I can't do any better than one taco. But what about Grave Danger? Well, this is another kinda annoying one, but it's a bit better. So there's lots of graves in this level, who would have guessed? And zombies can come out at any flag, not just the last one. It's not that hard, but sometimes graves just pop up at the most annoying times. I can settle for two tacos. Next is my favorite puzzle level, Can You Dig It? Just kidding, this is a different Can You Dig It, one that is bad. Yeah, so the deal with this minigame is that the entire board is filled with walnuts. So you need to dig a bunch of them up in order to place pea shooters, but don't dig up too many or the zombies will get through. So apparently, this level was originally planned to be level 1-5 instead of walnut bowling. I guess it was just a level to show off the shovel, but it's just not really that fun. Walnut bowling is one of the most memorable levels for a lot of people. I wonder how many of players would have made it past 1-5 if this was the level instead. Zero tacos. That's right, I said it was going to be from 1 to 3, but I'm breaking the rules for this one. Anyways, you know level 4-10? Well here's Dark Stormy Night, which is basically the same thing. The plants are a little different, but the idea of the screen being blank with just flashes of lightning to see is the same. I don't like this level that much actually. It's pretty annoying not to be able to see anything. As a finale to Fog it's fine, but if it was a mini game, I probably wouldn't play it. I'll just say two tacos. And the final one going in the mini games category, Bungie Blitz. It's the exact same level as 5-5. It's a little long, but it plays decently. The fifth level in every other world is playable as a mini game. I don't see why this didn't make the cut. Three tacos. Okay, well, that took a while, but those were all the actual mini games in the limbo page. There's still some other stuff though, so category 2, survival. We all know survival endless, few things are better than setting up a killer defense and trying to murder millions of zombies. But there's actually four other variations here, day, night, fog, and roof. I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea why these weren't included in the main game. They work perfectly and Having all these versions of Survival Endless would add a lot more to do in the game. Like yeah, you can still play them if you know where to look, but the average player won't know about them and will miss out. So I'm giving every variation of Survival Endless 3 tacos. They really should be playable normally. Alright, this is it. One last category. These are on the limbo page but are not actually playable levels. So I'm not going to bother rating them since there's not much to say on them and most of these are actually able to be accessed in the normal game. We'll just call them the Others, and the first one is Intro. It's just the opening cutscene to the game. I guess they stored it here. It'll drop you right off where you are in adventure mode after you watch it. Cool. Then there's Upsell. This exists in the demo version of the game. Once you complete it, Crazy Day will show up and basically be like, Hey, we ain't running a fucking charity here and you'll be prompted to buy the game. The Tree of Wisdom is also available on the Limbo page. I guess it was originally planned to be a minigame before they just added it to the Zen Garden. Speaking of the Zen Garden, that's also on here. So of course, it just takes you to your Zen Garden, just kidding, it crashes the game. And finally, there's one more thing to check out. Ice level. Let's try it. Looks pretty empty so far. I can place a walnut at least. And oh. I lost or not? 
Yeah, so I don't know exactly what this level was supposed to be, but it's not playable. Definitely weird though. Whew, that was a lot of stuff to talk about. Cut content in games is always an interesting topic, but I think PVZ has some of the coolest scrap content out there. I mean, how many games have a bunch of fully playable cut levels? Now honestly, a lot of them weren't great or even good, but they were definitely cool to check out and some of them were genuinely pretty fun. But I do understand why most of them never saw the light of day. Well what do you think? Do you wish some of these levels were never cancelled? And which was your favorite? Be sure to let me know in the comments, but for now, I've been Extra. Have an extraordinary rest of your day.